Hey y'all, Tanny Cooks here. Today I'm showing you how to make this delicious seafood meal. Fried white fish, fried calamari, deep fried lobster. It is amazing. I also made some delicious sides. So we have bacon wrapped potato wedges, some delicious mashed potatoes, some broccoli. This broccoli is frozen. This is broccoli spears that I steamed. I boiled some potatoes and then used my potato ricer and made the most glorious mashed potatoes. And I loaded them up with green onions, cheese, bacon for an amazing meal. So let's get to cooking and get started with our seafood. I have two cold water lobster tails that I washed and now I'm drying them off. Uh, they're about three and a half to four ounces each, so they're small ones, but still very tasty. I think these cost me about $8 each. Yeah, the price is going up on everything, including seafood, lobster, and crab legs. So I'm gonna butterfly these lobster tails before I fry them. And I'm going to start off by using my kitchen shears to cut down the back of the shell. Now after I do that, I stick my finger, one or two depending on the size of the lobster, down the base of it to help release the meat from the base of the lobster tail shell. And then it makes it easier to just lift it up out of the top of the shell. And you want to be careful you don't rip the meat, but you just want the meat to sit on top of the shell. It's a beautiful presentation, and it makes it easy to get the digestive tract or the dark string you might see in the middle. Same way you might see that in a piece of shrimp, you can pull that out the back of the lobster tail. So here I'm showing you with the second tail, lobster tail as well. Stick your finger down the bottom to help release the meat. Just move your finger from left to right gently to release the meat from the shell. Be careful because the bottom of the shell is very sharp, so you don't want to hurt yourself. But all of this effort is definitely worth the final product we're going to get with these lobster tails. The taste is amazing when it's fried. Better than when it's broiled or boiled, in my opinion. Now, I also have calamari. I bought these frozen, so I'm just going to open them over my sink and rinse them off. These are the pieces of squid which is what calamari is. So I'm just going to dry it off completely with my paper towels since we're deep frying and we want our stuff to be dry. And then I'm going to cut my squid into calamari size pieces. I love squid. It looks a little bit strange, I guess, but if you like the taste of shrimp, or fish which is common then you'll probably like the taste of calamari too it's just the shape is different but to me the flavor is very much the same so these are the tentacle areas of the squid kind of looks like baby octopus but it's not it's just all squid but I'm gonna fry it all up we're gonna bread it season it and fry it so now that I have my shellfish ready I have my white fish my whiting that I've rinsed off and then I'm drying them off in between paper towels it's a gentle fish, but I love the flavor. It's gentle because it's somewhat thin. It's not very thick. And here you have it. The skin is on, which is my preference, my lobster tails, and my squid calamari. So now I have my egg in a pie dish, shallow pie dish. I have my seasonings in there, as well as my seasonings and my flour cornmeal mix. So for seasonings, I have Old Bay, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, and my lemon pepper. So I'm just mixing up my egg, and then I'm gonna mix up my flour. So I want to add seasonings at each level to make sure my final seafood dish has all the flavor infused throughout. So I'm gonna start off with my fish, uh, because I have a couple of pounds of that that I'm cooking. So I'm just turning it over in my egg mixture, and then I'm dropping it into my seasoned flour mixture, flour and cornmeal. I love all kind of fried fish, whether it's whiting, catfish, perch, flounder. Flounder probably is my least favorite because it's so thin, it's easy to overcook, but I, I like the taste of it. So now that it's in my flour mixture, I'm just gonna toss it gently to make sure it's well covered, and then let it sit in the flour for a good 10 to 15 minutes because I want that breading to adhere and stay onto my seafood as it does its thing in the deep fryer. So now it's time to get our lobster tails going. So I'm gonna dip my lobster tail into the egg mixture. The meat and the shell 
It might seem crazy to deep fry the shell and bread it, but it really has a good flavor when you crunch on it. And the presentation is beautiful. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and bread the whole thing. Carefully toss it in the flour, and there we have it, our floured lobster tails. Next up, I'm gonna add my calamari, but you'll notice these pieces are really small. So I'm not gonna put them into the flour just yet. I don't want my calamari to get lost in the flour mixture. So I'm gonna do my other seafood, cook it, and then I'll put my squid into the flour and get it battered up. So my deep fryer is ready, it's heated. So I'm just gonna start off with my fish because it'll take longer than my shellfish to cook. So drop it in the grease. And you'll notice if you look closely, as fish cooks like chicken, it's gonna raise to the top. As it raises to the top and get the beautiful golden color, that's when you'll know that it is ready to be taken out and ready to eat. Look at that, y'all. Beautiful, beautiful whiting fish. My beautiful, beautiful golden fish. So flavorful, so delicious. Like you got to try this. And if you've never had deep fried lobster tail, go ahead and try it. If you fry fish, do the lobster tail just like I showed you. You will not be disappointed. It's like frying it does something extra to the texture that you don't get when you boil or steam the lobster. Like, it's just amazing. The main thing is don't fry it too long. You do not want to overcook it. When you see that shell turn red, go ahead and pull it up out because it's going to cook a little bit longer after you take it out the grease. So now that I got my shellfish out, I just added my calamari and it cooks quickly and it turns golden and it floats to the top. Look at that y'all. Oh my goodness. It's just gorgeous and delicious. So now that I have my seafood going, I am going to go ahead and do my potato wedges. So I cut my rest of potatoes up. I let them soak in some water to get the starch off. I dry them off and now I'm going to douse them in olive oil and seasoning. You can use the seasonings of your choice that you like on your french fries. I'm going to wrap these in bacon, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the seasoning. I'm just going to take a potato wedge, wrap a raw piece of bacon around it, holding the bacon on the end to make sure it's wrapped securely, and then I'm going to stick it in my air fryer for 12 to 14 minutes at 380 degrees for a delicious side dish. Potato wedges are yummy. You can dip them in sour cream or dip them in ketchup. Once they're done, look at how golden and beautiful. You can stick your fork in it and see how tender it is on the inside. This is a perfect side dish or even snack on any given day. Bacon wrapped potato wedges. And I garnish them with dried parsley and drizzle some of the bacon fat from the air fryer on the finished product. So there we have it, our delicious seafood lunch, seafood dinner. We have fried lobster, calamari, fish, mashed potatoes, steamed broccoli, air fried potatoes. This is a perfect meal, y'all. If you make it, leave me a comment down below and let me know you did it. Thank you so much for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel.